Hi everybody, and uh, today I'll uh, try to explain you with this, this short, short, short video uh, the, the meaning and the semantics uh, the, and the usage of, the, of a keyword of the language, uh, which is the this keyword, uh, which is common for uh, basically all programming languages, object-oriented programming languages like Java, where you have this uh, to access uh, fields uh, of a class, uh, Python where we have self, uh, but of course JavaScript has uh, their own special way of doing things uh, as we uh, uh, um, already learned uh, with uh, many other examples. So um, what uh, uh, the discussion is about uh, uh, where and how to use this keyword and what it means. Uh, basically uh, we should not bring into the JavaScript world what we already know uh, from other uh, object-oriented languages uh, uh, in which uh, there are some rules that usually assign um, the scope of, of, uh, of, the, of the block where this appears uh, as the way of interpreting what object this is referring to. Uh, okay, uh, we already are, all know that this refers to some object. Usually, imagine Java for example, this always refers to the instance of the class in which it, it appears. Okay. And uh, um, so it's the same class, but it's less lexically defined. Okay. Um, usually we have a lexical in interpretation. Uh, but th those rules that we learned in other uh, programming languages uh, don't uh, uh, nicely translate into, into JavaScript. And I want to show you an example why. Hmm? Uh, let's consider this code, for example. Uh, in this code, um, oh, just, I have a very simple function to create one person. Okay, we already use this function uh, as a constructor function for building a new object. Uh, okay, uh, I'm building an object with some properties. We already saw uh, one special case of the usage of this that was quite intuitive at the time, right? Uh, so we are assigning some attributes of an object. We are assigning attributes to some object. And we saw, we saw, we said that this object was the one created by the new operator. Hmm? So a new object where I am assigning some property, and some properties can also be functions. And so this function is telling me whether this person is of minor, of age, or not. And so it's quite uh, obvious that uh, uh, is minor is a property of the object that we are creating. And inside this function, the usage of this here in line 8. Uh, uh, should refer to the same object where the function is defined. And there are no surprises about that. Okay, if I run this, I, it will tell me that Bob is not minor and Sue, which was uh, 15 years old, is uh, of minor age. Okay, that's, that's uh, fine. No, nothing surprising here. Uh, this, I used one of the syntaxes for defining the function. Uh, I could also use it as a narrow function. Okay, it would be equally um, understandable. Okay, so it will work in the same way uh, because you, we, we already know that uh, there are many ways of defining a function. Uh, but if I still do another modification, so I define an external function. Uh, maybe I call it uh, is of minor age. And uh, uh, let me just copy this instruction here and assign this property is minor to the name uh, of is minor is of minor age. So beware, we are not putting uh, parentheses here because we are not calling the function, but I define the fun some function here, and in line in line uh, eleven, I just copy the reference to this function. So, uh, and this is legal in, in JavaScript, of course, because they can pass around the functions uh, uh, normally, as they were normal variables. And we see that the behavior is exactly the same. Okay. But the strange thing is this function definition. In this function, we are referring to an object this. And how can we know in the, in the, in the definition of this function, what is this referring to? Imagine this other uh, uh, constructor function uh, would be uh, in, in another file very far from here. So how can JavaScript know, or um, we, we may also have another object that will store this function as a property, 
so there is, we are uh, actually using a reference to an object inside a function that doesn't have any link any connection to the place where this object is created so how can this work this at, uh, at least tells us that the, um, something is different uh, in the way uh, this works we're not we're not we would not expect this to work uh, because we would say okay this uh, we are not inside the constructor function what object uh, are we referring to okay this is where uh, the rules uh, for uh, javascript comes into play hmm? um, because we should not think about uh, the meaning of this uh, depending on where it appears so we were confused because this appeared inside a function where we weren't creating an object okay but this is not something that uh, javascript uh, uh, wants us to think javascript uh, doesn't care about uh, the context in which uh, the, this keyword appears okay uh, but there are some rules that will always tell us in a deterministic way what is the object that this is referring to so there are some rules whenever javascript finds this apply some rules for basic rules plus one um, to determine which is the object we are referring to and so that we can use its attributes normally hmm? Uh, this association of this with an object is called the binding of uh, this uh, to a specific object and this binding depends only on one information the call site of the function so we must examine in which place of the code this function the function is called we where well, we really have the function call for example here the function call will be in line 18 or line 19 we are calling a function which is defined line 3 we are not calling it directly we are but we are calling it uh, through a copy of, of, of its value of its reference okay so we are referring to a function uh, that is minor being stored uh, here hmm? okay uh, so the first uh, point is that uh, we are asked to find uh, the place where the function is called is called this is called the call site of the function so i have a usage of this this is, is defined inside the function where is this function called it's not called here because here we have no call of the function we are just copying the reference the actual call will be there down there and so the rule will tell us uh, if you if you examine line 18 so the exact line where the function is called you will understand how uh, we how we bind how uh, this uh, variable is bound to a specific object the binding depends exclusively on the call side of the function it doesn't depend how the function is declared in the, with the various syntax or where the function is declared where it's declared inside an object inside a function or outside the body of a function or an object definition okay so it's a bit strange the, the the meaning of this is dynamically determined according to the function call and not statically determined according to the lexical scope there is one exception to the rule that are arrow functions so we'll deal with arrow function at the end so for the moment let's imagine that we are not defining um, we are not considering this inside an arrow function but uh, this inside a normally defined function with a function uh, declaration or a function expression for for creating them okay so okay we should first locate the calls uh, the call site of a function and the call site is a dynamic concept because uh, once we have the function defined in a place uh, that function may be called several times uh, from several places now in our code so we should think dynamically when this function is in execution which was the line before that that was executed that actually called this function and so we can find that one function may have many several uh, different web uh, call sites and every time we apply we examine the call site to determine the value of this um, in that specific call so the interpretation of this may the binding of this may be different in different function calls that's the only important information right now in this moment uh, which is uh, the line of code that just called my function 
uh, I, if you want to play with that uh, I will give you uh, a link here if you click, click here uh, to our website which is called loop uh, that it allows you to to see and to visualize the call stack of the function uh, calling each other so for example we will tell you that the function foo is called uh, by uh, the code of the function bar for example and so it will tell you immediately uh, where is the calling uh, location for a given function okay but in many cases it's also obvious from the code this is nice for for, for understanding better step by step uh, what happens in the call stack uh, and by the way also in the in the event loop because the full the full picture also has another another uh, box here for showing uh, asynchronous uh, um, code but anyway uh, once we located the call site so the line where our function that contains the uses of this uh, is called we have uh, we apply four rules uh, rule number one and these four rules are mm, more specific uh, the, the first one is more general and the other ones are more specific okay so this is the, the default rule if no other more specific rules apply this one applies and it is telling that uh, okay maybe the call site is a normal function call i'm calling the function normally what happens in this case okay if i'm calling this function normally every instance of uh, this inside the function being called is undefined so if i try here to call the function is of minor age and say console.log is of minor age with no parameters uh, because this is a function that is defined normally so defining the function is not a problem when i try to run it I have uh, an error that tells me that I cannot read the property age of undefined. And what is undefined is the value of this generated when the call site is calling the function normally. So this means that we cannot, uh, um, if a function uses this, we will never be able to call the function in the normal way. Hmm? Because we need an, a, a binding, an assignment to an object. Okay? Uh, where uh, there's also some particular case where if we are not in strict mode then this refers to the global object but we will always be in strict mode but in any case uh, this rule is useless basically right uh, because if uh, it's a way of saying undefined mm. uh, it doesn't give you uh, any information so the rule for us is we never use this inside function that are assumed or that are designed to be called in standalone mode, that are designed to be called uh, normally. Okay, so uh, a, f a function, a normal function call will never call a function that contains this. And if a function contains this, cannot be called in this way. So how can we call it? Well, maybe with rule number two, we have the so-called implicit binding, uh, where we are calling a function being a property of an object and we uh, use the dot notation to extract a property from an object and call the function just in the case when this uh, property is a function itself okay and this is what we did here in our code uh, no so let's comment it which is because it's wrong we call the function uh, by using the dot notation from an object this is called syntactical and implicit binding. This is implicitly, it means automatically, bound to the object from which the property has been um, extracted, basically. Hmm? Uh, then this property here, this function, can be defined in line or can be defined elsewhere, also outside the object. It does, we don't care really, okay? We can define the function inside an object, like, like here, or inside the constructor function, like we did in this code here. Uh, the way in which we are defining the function and the location where the function code is actually uh, implemented uh, is irrelevant. The only thing that counts uh, is uh, uh, whether 
uh, you are calling that with a dot notation from an object in this case what happens is the normal rule the normal case this inside the function refers to the object we have been called there so in our code here in our example uh, this first in the first call so here refers uh, sorry let me close this so that we have all the code in the same page in the in line 20 when i'm calling is minor as a property of object bub uh, then this uh, refers to to bub and it's in the second line when we are using is minor extracting this property from the object two then this will refer to the object two so i'm extracting the age of two even if this function is outside the person is outside the object uh, we don't care because the information about the binding of this is given in the function call in the function call through the implicit binding uh, uh, implicit binding equal automatic binding equal dot notation with an object equals uh, this is the object on which we are calling the property hmm? the, in other languages we will call it a method but uh, not in javascript so this is the most important rule uh, just be aware that uh, again uh, if you have a, a function here defined inside an object a property okay a property foo we can call the function like object.foo okay but if we take this function definition and copy it somewhere to another variable then we cannot call this function through the other variable okay but you say okay i can call this function because this function is actually object.foo but uh, uh, in this case in this place here the reference to the object has been lost we forgot the the reference to the object because you see there's no implicit call here there's no uh, implicit binding so we are calling a function for which we only know the reference this function will be there here and we don't know we have lost the information that this function is actually taken from the object obj so the uh, the problem is uh, whenever you have a, a, a function property always remember to call it through an object and never try to use or reuse the reference to this function because in that case you you will lose the binding okay um, so that's uh, uh, what happened that uh, um, inadvertently so you could uh, create uh, apply a rule number one so the global rule that will give you undefined uh, even if you don't want to do that uh, just because you pass the value around instead of passing the um, the, um, the variable so the the basic rule is uh, once you have a, fu um, a method of an object so a, fu a function property never pass the reference to this uh, function if you need to pass something pass the object the entire object so that the caller of the method will call it through the object reference and not call the function reference itself. Hmm? Uh, it's a it's it's a normal okay. It's, well, it's nothing strange. We just need to be careful that we learn that we can call uh, functions uh, normally in this way and have this uh, work, uh, but uh, uh, we should not lose this reference. Okay, rule number three, so called explicit binding. Uh, I will be very brief because normally we don't use this uh, uh, syntax. Uh, it's possible not to call a function just by using the parentheses, but to use uh, a method on the function object. So functions are objects and they have methods, of course. Uh, methods that are called uh, call or apply that specifically bind this function call here to an object that we give as a first parameter. So in this case, we are saying, okay, we want to, foo is a function, I want to call this function, and inside this specific call, we bind the, the function this uh, to the object that we give as a first parameter. And then we have all the other parameters for the function. Okay. Um, so it is a sort of an explicit binding. I, I explicitly tell which object, which object uh, I'm, call, I'm, I'm using for binding. Okay, this form is uh, 
basically equivalent to object dot foo with the parameters okay this is explicit it's part of, of the reflection methods in javascript uh, and is mostly used uh, inside libraries where maybe you are binding to some object uh, but you're not sure which object uh, you created because it's uh, the user of the library so to being generic and doing reflection stuff normal code doesn't use this because it's but basically it's too um it's too complex okay uh, we, you can just uh, use it in, a, in that way um okay uh in there's a special case for this which is called the hard binding uh, so it's still uh, in uh, in uh, the explicit binding may use the call method or uh, we can just create a new function that stores the binding with an object so that we can call that function later and the function will remember the binding of the object itself so we are in a way separating the binding moment uh, from the function call moment and this is used uh, uh, with the bind method so if we take a function and we call bind with an object uh, then we are creating a new function that uh, calls uh, when, when we call this new function this will call the original foo function with the binding to the object mm -hmm. so we have a, gen a general function foo that uh, can be bound to different objects and every time we call this new function the same object will be stored it will be um, say bounded to this mm -hmm. so it's a way of say of uh, freezing the object on which this function is operating we may use sometimes because we have general function that it can be useful and we want to create a, a version of this function that works specifically on the object that we do we want and we store the object inside the function basically so in our code we could do that for example by creating a new function uh, maybe uh, is bob minor uh, just and we obtain that by taking is of minor age of minor age and we bind it to Bob and so in this case every time we call this function is Bob minor we are implicitly referring to this object Bob so we can call console.log oh sorry what's what am i doing console.log uh, of uh, bob and uh, is bob is bob minor okay and if we if we run this oops go down save and run load this it will tell me false because of course uh, the the call to is bob minor uses inside of this instruction uses the uh, the, um, the reference to, to bob which is 40 years old okay uh, this solves the problem but of course we have a function that is only bound for its uh, lifetime to work with only the, exactly that object we cannot uh, use this uh, is bob minor for for you for another person because it's already bound to that hmm? it may be useful sometimes especially when you're when we are passing properties around uh, in react so let's remember this rule number four is uh is another easy one is when we call a function with the new operator so we already saw the constructor function that uses some sort of a new syntax now it's time to understand really what's happening uh, when we call a function with a new keyword it's a function call that uh, um, creates a special binding it's called the new binding new binding rule and uh, uh, it creates a new object a new empty object and within the function this refers to the new object and the new object will be later the result of the function will be assigned to the obj or whatever so we already know this particular case okay this is the what we already used up to now in the previous examples 
actually we are in the condition of understanding actually what new does what the, uh, what the constructor call does first of all a new object is created uh, then this object is, is linked uh, with the prototype chain uh, um, to, to the function but we'll discuss prototypes in a, in a future lecture and the newly constructed object is set is bound to the this uh, for this function call okay so implicitly we are binding uh, this uh, to the object that we just created okay actually the object is created before calling the function and not inside the function but this is just a minor detail and uh, uh, normally the function will return this object that has been just created unless the function returns another object but well, this is normally the case is normally uh, which is not normally what we do we return the object that we just created for for this reason okay so um, in summary the last rules uh, have priority over the first two answers so the rules are, are uh, if let's inspect where we call a function are we calling that with new okay this is the new object are we calling it uh, with call okay the binding is on the specific object this uh, is for call for apply or for a bind uh, are we using uh, the dot notation syntax or are we calling the function as part of a dot uh, notation of a function property okay then bind uh, this will be bound to the object part of the calling otherwise we are in a default binding case uh, and uh, uh, this will be undefined in our case since we are, we are always working in strict mode hmm? uh, so these are the four basic rules uh, and we see that the, the most uh, useful ones uh, for us uh, in our normal code uh, will be the new binding and the object binding or so-called implicit binding and that are part of uh, our normal uh, implementation of the code the default binding will never be used basically it's useless for us doesn't do anything and this is only for special cases okay so especially for library de library developers but not for very uh, seldom we use it for uh, normal code all of this only works if this is a function defined with the function keyword for functions defined with the arrow syntax so arrow functions the rules are different there is no uh, the these four rules don't apply to arrow functions and for arrow functions there's only one rule that works eh? and the rule is here in our function this is bound to the this from the enclosing surrounding function scope okay so uh, if we have this inside an arrow function for example here we have another function where we are using this there is no specific rule that links this uh, to the call side of the arrow function no uh, what happens is that uh, we use the uh, we, 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 we inspect uh, the context in which the function is defined uh, and we ask ourselves okay what is this valid here so the value of this from the scope in which the arrow function is defined uh, will be translated and used also for the usage of this inside arrow functions to say it in a very short way the arrow does not redefine really this if I have an arrow function, the exter basically we have a closure over this. The, the value of this inside the function is the same as we have outside the arrow function. This is only valid for arrow functions. So arrow functions uh, close over this and don't uh, redefine a new this. Normal functions do. And uh, create a new uh, interpretation for this that depends on the four rules that we saw before. So it's very... Uh, useful because we have many callbacks and if we are defining callbacks with arrow functions uh, then this will always refer basically to the object that uh, uh, created the callback in the first place hmm? so practically uh, there is a difference between using the arrow function and using the uh, the function definition and uh, and if you have a look uh, at some of the code that we wrote with the with the SQLite uh, driver, you could uh, uh, observe that we used uh, some some arrow function and uh, and use uh, and that uh, allowed us to, to use the, the this operator. Hmm? 
uh, but maybe we can review together the, the examples next time we are using the uh, we are using it um, we are using the, um, the SQLite code okay so this is an exception to summarize I think the most important slides of, uh, of the discussion is this one actually we assume so let's make it larger we assume that we defined a function foo uh, with the, that contains the usage of this and so uh, in order uh, we check how this function is called whether it's called with new or whether it's called with an object reference and in the, in those cases we know that uh, we are re this refers to the new object and in this case it refers to the object uh, the obj reference uh, that has been used for the call uh, there are other cases rule number three that we said we only will use bind in some special cases but normally we don't uh, uh, need uh, to refer to this rule and the default binding is actually not used and then we have let's say the, the fifth rule which is uh, uh, arrow functions just uh, reuse the value of this uh, uh, over the surrounding scope from the surrounding scope so it's uh, in practically we have three rules to remember new object reference and arrow functions these three behave in a different way uh, and uh, the new is quite uh, intuitive basically because okay i'm creating an object so every usage of this inside this function will refer to that object that uh, the purpose of the function is actually to create and put properties into that object so it's not surprising at all um, the implicit binding is also normal i'm calling with the no notation we should just be careful to use either of the two exclusively so let's avoid the risk of having uh, broken references sorry broken references where we are by mistake uh, calling a function using this without an explicit context without an implicit binding or a new binding so this is just a, if you find uh, if you get um, an undefined error no, something uh, like, like we say the error age is not a property of undefined remember that maybe you was you were caught by this rule by mistake and check the call site there's nothing wrong with the function there's something wrong with the place in which this function is called okay in many cases the call site is not in your library in your code the call site may be inside the library that will call your function as a callback and so you, are, you don't have any control over the place where the function is called in that case it's much better to use a narrow function uh, that doesn't depend on the call site uh, of the callback function that you are defining it depends on the call side of your function that you are trying to define mm -hmm. and so in this case uh, it's uh, it, the arrow functions are shortcuts to avoid understanding how the library will call your callback uh, and so understand the call site inside the library what syntax that it's used and so on uh, but simply okay I don't care how this function is called. Let's use the this that you, I already have defined and sorted out in the in the external environment. Okay, so these are the three rules that we must remember. The three types of usages. Uh, let's refrain. Let's avoid to use any other syntax. Let's be just be careful when I'm calling a property, when I'm calling a method, either with new or with the object notation, or with an arrow function. These are the three ways in which. Uh, the behavior is predictable all in all the other cases you can get some uh, undefined values or something like that so at the end uh, it's quite simple okay how uh, to to use uh, properly this keyword even if at the beginning it may seem a bit strange like uh, in the example at the beginning that the, we started at the beginning but actually the rules are quite simple uh, they are different so they mm, no they just they just merit uh, some 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 thought and uh, some discussion right here okay that was just uh, uh, the specifics of the, this function that we will uh, appreciate uh, better when we start uh, with react where actually we have to to uh, to pass around properties of different objects uh, and so this will be relevant uh, for that kind of code that we are going to write
Okay, thank you for listening and that concludes this uh, short talk. Bye-bye.